Okay, final score here in Dr. Hyde Park. And Roscommon have beaten Sligo by 10 points on a scoreline of 121 to 111. Shane, what did you make of that? Yeah, quite good. Uh, you know, the first half, um, I think, was littered with, with a lot of errors by both sides. We've seen a lot of wides, but I think there was a feeling, and certainly we alluded to it at half-time, that Roscommon looked to be the better team, the more composed team, and maybe eight points to six at half-time didn't reflect their superiority. Um, Aidan made a couple of great saves and goal for Sligo. Ben O'Card was causing them all sorts of trouble at the back. Roscommon had runners coming from, from deep and um, Sligo didn't seem to be able to get to, to grips with it. But they got they got a couple of scores clo- to close off the half and they, they had, I think, I think 10 wides in the first half that Sligo would be disappointed with. Mm. Um, but it follows the template of a lot of the games, um, I think, in the All-Ireland series now where there's a bit of touchy-feely, certainly for 20 minutes. And... and uh, even the, the lower division teams can put it up for a period of time, but then I think the superior class comes out, um, certainly with 20, 25 minutes to go, um, and that was the case this afternoon. Yeah, do you think that is the only issue with this new system, is that there are games that are, there is a big golfing class, really? Yeah, but I think, you know, if we want the other teams to, to, to get up to the level of, you know, the, the, the better sides, they have to be kind of exposed, I think, to that type of competition. And uh, I think it's great. I think that the All-Ireland Series is, is, is terrific in many ways. Mm. Some of the games are a bit benign and some of the games are, are you know, there, there's there's not really a lot at stake. We know the results probably, if not the, the outcome and the, the, the level of the score against the opposing team. But um, I think, you know, there's many things we give criticism size the GA for this is one thing I think they've got right and we've been crying out for three years anyhow that we want more games and the players want more games and uh, you know I think even nowadays you know when you if your championship you have your league you have your championship you know the All-Ireland series and there's a you know there's a, there's a feeling I think that guys are in clubs and uh, sorry counties are improving mm. by being exposed and uh, it will obviously throw up the odd result that maybe our uh, you know doesn't put the, the lower league teams um, in that kind of level but at the same time be, to be exposed to them is no harm for them either uh, just at full time there I had to go down to the pitch to do some of the post-match interviews and by god it's warm down there you'd nearly forget that when you're up this high wouldn't you you'd forget how warm it is actually down there uh, so it's not e- it's not an easy day for football it's a nice day to watch it but it's not an easy day to play no it. certainly and, and the sod would be very hard as well you know and mm. um, you know I think to be you know to be fair it's, it's a great it's great weather and it's a, it was a great day for the game um, I was a bit surprised really by the lack of skill shown by Sligo certainly when they were transitioning in, in their forward movements I think when they look at it um, you know maybe not been exposed to this level of competition and the intensity of it and added to the heat and the hard ground and, and all that sort of stuff um, they made a lot of handling errors yeah. basic handling errors really in threatening areas sometimes as well and uh, you know that'll be disappointing but um, Roscommon were much more fluid they were much more flexible they had the better forwards I think in Ben O'Carroll they had a ball winner at the top of the pivot um, they could kick it they could bring it at, at, at pace um, the two uh, two Murtas were outstanding yeah. I thought as well uh, in the Smith had a fantastic game five points from play Dylan Rowan who so- seldom gets mentioned um, and Keane McEwan were also excellent today so I think five of those common starting forward scored Donny Smith came on for Kieran Lennon and scored Dylan Rowan contributed a goal and a point from midfield um, David would be happy with that notwithstanding there's probably still room for improvement you know but um Many things, you know, many things about the the new competition are really, really good, and I think there'll be tweaks maybe going forward. Uh, but for now, as a Roscommon man and a Roscommon supporter, uh, it's great to see us playing the sort of football that we played, which is kind of in contrast maybe to last Sunday, which was a more tactical game against Dublin. Mm. I think today um, we showed that we have that fluidity of movement in our forward line, uh, notwithstanding the, the the level of opponent, and um, that we can expose teams, um, and that's what Roscommon will be looking for more. That can we keep doing? Doing that and still remain uh, defensively solid. And it was interesting today. I think we we defended um, with a higher line uh, than we did against Galway here in in the, in the Connacht Championship. So that's obviously something that they've been working on. And, and uh, if they can bring more purpose there, I think um, we, we will be will be a force to be reckoned with when we get into the, the last uh, the preliminary quarters or the last eight. Yeah, uh, as a Roscommon man and a Roscommon fan, you must be really happy with how Davy Burke has brought a lot of confidence into this team 
uh, it doesn't seem like it's his first year in charge, does it? No, correct. John. I think, look, at he's, he's got great people around him as well. And I'd say Davey would be the first technologist. Mm. You know, you've got uh, you've got Eddie Lowen here from, from Roscommon and, and uh, Mark McHugh and, and others. And it's I think, is the, the culmination of the team. But he's given the lads huge, huge confidence. And we've always known that we've had... We've had really good forwards. Um, defensively, we haven't really been able to put a system around the players that we have, we've had there. But we've put a system in place now. And, um, you know, outside of the goal today, really, Sligo didn't threaten as much. Mm-hmm. Um, the kick wide's all right, but they were kicking wide from really outside through attacking point and and uh, that probably showed there maybe lack of inexperience as well but um yeah look at his davies brought so much to the to the county and and to the team um at the moment and and i think the confidence is high and you know they won't fear anybody now um going in as i said through a preliminary or a last eight and uh, teams that come up against Roscommon and um, will be giving them the respect that they deserve um when when they reach the knockout stages there's a bit of i think there probably is a little bit of um touchy feely football about it at the moment we haven't hit the the real uh, nutty crust of championship knockout football yet but uh, look at we're in a good position and the players have confidence when you're winning games it's it's uh, it's 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 something that's hard to beat uh, Davey did get a bit of stick over the week of his style of play against Dublin uh, they, they, it's a results based business they got a result in Crow Park yet during the week he still did get a bit of stick about how long they keep the ball for in position without any attacking uh, without any sense of any attack coming uh, what do you what do you make of that? <laughs> I, th- I thought it was actually funny because you know the good teams keep the ball you know when they yeah. have to keep it I mean uh, he was getting stick from all sorts but the team was getting stick from all yeah. sorts of quarters but I couldn't understand it at all so if you can keep the ball you're going to keep the ball and um, you know we'd be given given away given out of teams losing the ball losing it simply Roscommon kept the ball uh, at the end of a, one pr- particular play that's now become infamous because of the, the, the Twitter accounts and all this sort of stuff yeah. it was six and a half minutes and a great a great Murta score at the end and that's really Dublin have done that for years, you know, and you're 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 basically you're running teams down and running teams into the ground. But it's funny when the small boys start doing it, how the big boys start making noise. And and uh, look at I, I think Davy be delighted with it, and, and the team will be delighted with it, and um, supporters will be delighted. With it. We we have to find ways of playing the games differently, mm. technically and tactically. It's very important to have that flexibility within your game if you if you're reliant on just one system of play now it won't work for you um, and I think we've seen that again Galway that we played with a very low defensive block we couldn't transition fast enough we couldn't get the bodies up to support our, our inside forward uh, whereas today there's been a difference and again Dublin last week there was a difference and maybe look at Dublin or, or, or Dublin they'll probably still be in the last four but last week will have given our lads huge confidence that the system can work when you play like that uh, and once you can execute the system then um, you can keep te- teams at bay and if you can keep it for seven minutes uh, that's 10% of any football match and, yeah, and you know it's, it's a lot you know and we've seen that today with Sligo you know, they tried to keep ball and then they kind of ran down borough holes um, when they got to the forward line. They weren't as fluid uh, as we were. Their movement wasn't as, as impressive. They weren't able to create those those gaps by entering and exiting space quickly. And, and that's really the difference when you, when you come to this level. And Roscommon are boxing really, really high. Um, you know, when it gets to, down to knockout football, It'll be a little bit different. There'll be there'll be different um, questions that have to be answered. But for now, we're answering the ones that have been put in front of us, and I think uh, the management and Dave will be very happy with that. Uh, just curious to know, you're involved with uh, club teams. So you're still coaching. Uh, do you see that kind of style of play seeping into the into the club game? Even the keeper coming out, uh, it's nearly it's nearly fifty, it's nearly basketball at times, where mm. fifteen press and then. It's the other way around. Do you see it seeping into the club game? It's in the club game. Like I mean, maybe not so prevalent, but it's certainly in the club game. Um, I coach and um, manage Colliery and Westmead, and mm. uh, a very good club in Division One of the Championship. But it's it's again, it's having you you have to learn how to play different ways now with club football. And club football is probably catching on. The coaching element and the management element of it is is uh, you know you're kind of you're mimic, mimicking what you're seeing at at uh, at inter county level. The players are mimicking it because some of them. Are, are playing at inter county mm. level and they're, they tactically and uh, they're, they're they're looking at different ways of playing the game. So I think the only way you can change the game now is by changing the rules. 
um, and there's been many different ways of talking about changing rules with shot clocks and passing back and all yeah. this sort of stuff I don't really agree with that I don't think I think it's simplistic it's a, it's very much easier than that if you bring back the kick out back to the small parallelogram you, you actually you negate a lot of what we see today uh, particularly with teams bouncing off and even pressing if you want to press you can press more efficiently if the ball has to transition longer if the ball uh, is going short like we're seeing at, uh, at the moment with yeah. inverted wing backs uh, it's very very difficult because the pace the, the, the pitch has been has been squeezed if the pitch is elongated and you make it longer the players are spread out even wider yeah. so that means um, teams are going to press even more efficiently but um, we've decided I think with the rules to bring all kickouts now uh, for, uh, that must pass the 45 so what you're going to be left with is a mishmash of a rule that actually was brought in to create mark superiority around the middle third of the pitch yeah. we're now going to finish with, with maybe 22 23 players competing for one kick out breaking ball and and um i don't know what it's going to be like really it's it's you know if the ball has to transition that far you're not going to get marks and you're going to get big rooks around the pitch by bringing the ball back to the small parallelogram you change the whole the whole emphasis on the game for, from the restarts um and maybe from a score you could take it from around the penalty spot or something like that um but that's something that's something for the rule makers um the game as it is at the minute You've got it's, it's challenging to find different tactical ways and different elements to the play. Davy has done that, as you alluded yeah. to, call inside the year, um, with with his coaches and with with uh, with um, the people around him. And you know, Conor Carroll has been a revelation in goal as well. Um, really good work on their short kickouts. The restarts have been really good. Um, midfield has has improved, and our forward play with the forwards we have has improved as well. With the likes of Eddie Lohan around, and and uh, with with the coach and the forwards, so all these things, you know, they're they're, they're um, they're, there's a lot of ingredients that goes into actually making a team tick at this level, and uh, it's about practicing it and then executing it on on match day. And I think if if the more often you do it, the, the better you get at it. Uh, you mentioned Connor Carroll there. Uh, I think he took the first shot of the game in the in the first opening few minutes. If I'm not, he, he did. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, just, just sallied wide. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as a goalkeeper, would you like to play in in, the, in this type of game? Oh, jeez, it'd be great. You know, yeah, it'd be great if the legs were just about 22 or 23 years yeah. younger. Yeah, I, I do envy the lads playing now because it's 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 such a different game. Yeah, um, but it's such. Like, I I mean, we we give out about it, but I actually think that it's very uh, you know challenging uh, in terms of certainly tactically. Uh, you're forced to think different ways. Um, you know, the traditionalists will tell you that, you know, we, we should go back to catch and, kick, catch and kick. But to be honest, about when you look back at 35, 40 years ago, there was a lot of poor fare as well. Mm. Um, nowadays, you know, you, you see great scores, um, you see very athletic players. Yeah, you see a lot of mistakes. But I think that was, you know, sometimes we look, uh, we can look back through rose tinted uh, windows yeah. and rose tinted glasses and uh, say everything was great. And already it wasn't really. Um, I, I I like the game today. Uh, do can it, can we make improvement to to it? I think absolutely. Um, but the way it's played, um, yeah, there's some benign stuff across the pitch. But it's up to the other teams then to find ways yep. of actually counteracting that and and trusting their processes and trusting their players a little bit better. And to be fair, I, I thought Roscommon have improved in that element. Their trust now to keep a Ben O'Carroll up front. They trust to keep McKean McKeown or two up front at certain stages of the play. Uh, they're not coming back as far, mm. and if they can keep that up, um, they'll be they'll be a, a fighter for for any opposition. Yeah. So last question is: Do you think that they can top the group? I suppose it'll come down to score difference now, won't it? Yeah. Well, we, you know, I, I I don't like to be you know disrespectful of any county because I think it's very important. We could find ourselves. Uh, you know, in a space in a couple, few years' time, when some of these lads go, the top players that we have are all approaching thirty or over thirty, mm. uh, in a, as a Division Two or Division Three team, and we we have to enjoy these this team while we have it. Um, but you have to say that um, Dublin are going to beat Sligo. It does depend on the the the, the amount mm. that they're going to beat them by. Um, the Kildare Scotland game, I think, will be a lot closer than than people expect. Um, you know. They're, they are, after all, a Division Two team. They did put it up to Dublin, Crow Park, like ourselves as well, earlier mm. on in the summer um, or the spring. Um, so it's going to come down to score difference. And without being disrespectful to Sligo, I think Dublin will, will beat Sligo by what they have to beat them by. 
uh, to win the game and then um, we'll have to be, be do our job and be, beat um, Kildare uh, wherever wherever it's going to be to the more Port Leash Crow Park it looks mm. like um, so look at it, it can go either way we could top the group we could finish second and we could finish third it would be ideal to finish top absolutely uh, if we finish second or third I think you're, 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 you'll, you'll take that as well 